<laughs> We're getting a little carried away with these. This this is like completely modded with like a hardcore spring in here and it's just, it's, it's getting out of hand. Yeah. I don't need this. I don't, I've got enough energy. What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to another tutorial. This is part three in mistakes that you want to avoid as a photographer or filmmaker. The first part, we were talking about shooting actual applications with the camera. The second part, we talked about editing, mistakes that you make when editing when you're a beginner. And the third section, today's video, we are covering the business aspect of mistakes to avoid as a young entrepreneur, photographer, or filmmaker, setting out into the world to try and make this a career or try and make some money from this. Maybe it's just some extra cash on the weekend or a full blown like paycheck. These are a couple things I've compiled that I wish I had when I started or wish that I did better. And we're gonna start with those. Number one, contracts. Contracts are so important. They are no fun at all to make, they're no fun to read, and they're no fun to sign, but they are there to protect you. No matter who you are shooting for, listen to me, no matter who you're shooting for, if it's a friend, if it's family, it doesn't matter, get a contract. Lay out everything that you hope to do for that person. Both of you sign it, date it, whatever. If there's compensation, both of those things are agreed, you've both signed, it's done. That way, if anything comes up, if extra work is piled on, if you didn't do enough work, both parties have a signed document clearly outlining what the expectations are because I find that's the biggest loophole. That's the biggest mistake is expectations are always different from one person to the other. And if those expectations are set clear at the very beginning and they're followed through to the end because you have a contract, business is better. So if you don't have a contract, download a sample template, check it out, read it, maybe fill in your own stuff instead of the sample. Do whatever you got to do, take it to a lawyer, get a friend to look at it, get your parents to look at it, Get your older siblings to look at it, whatever. Start with something, okay? Signed agreements. That is point number one. Number two is not charging enough. Now, I'm an advocate for working for free at the beginning to get your foot in the door. A lot of people are like, no, you should never undersell yourself. Your time is worth, yes, your time is valuable and your time is worth money, but hustling and doing work pro bono going to get you into more doors. It's going to open up more doors for you. It's going to get you into more places, meet new people. It helped build my career. It helped build careers like my friend D-Rock, who just put a great post online about how he worked for free right up to hustling to be Gary V's personal videographer. That is awesome. But not charging enough is something I could have done better as a growing entrepreneur and a photographer trying to make it in the field. I was always just so excited to get a gig that I completely forgot what I should be charging, what my time is worth. Not not only are you supplying the equipment for this job, you're taking your gear that you bought to a photo shoot, you're driving your vehicle, using your gas, taking the time out of your day, then you're coming back and you're editing all those photos that's also skill with software that you're paying for. So the list goes on and on and on and on. Those things are valuable. So once you start charging for your work, make sure you're charging enough. I mean, you think about it, like some of these cameras are thousands and thousands of dollars. If you're gonna go do some portrait shots and you're only gonna charge a hundred bucks or 200 bucks for a quick portrait session, one, what does that say about you as a photographer and the quality of work that you put out? And two, how is that ever actually gonna make you money or pay back your gear or actually get you ahead in this game? So make sure you're charging enough. Sometimes you can throw numbers out there that might even see a little crazy to you and that client comes back and goes, yeah, all right, no problem. And you think to yourself, oh, Oh, I did it. I can't. It can be very exciting, but it's something that you got to take seriously. So really sit down and factor in all of those things I listed to know what your time is worth and charge accordingly. Point number three coming up. Point number three is checklists. I can't stress this enough. So if you're going on a shoot, let's just say you're shooting a wedding. You've got the contract in place. You've charged what you wanted to. Now it comes to the actual shoot day. I always recommend getting a checklist from the client of everything they want done. That way you can reference that throughout the day, throughout the shoot, and you know you've got everything. If that client fails to provide you something on that checklist, it is not your fault. Example, let's just say you're shooting a wedding. You've got that checklist, get the dress 
dress, get the drinks in the morning, get the gifts, the first look, blah, 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 blah. You're knocking off all those things. But then maybe two weeks later, that client comes back and says, Aunt Margaret never had her portrait taken with us. And we're very upset about this. And she flew all the way here from Australia and we're not gonna see her ever again. And you didn't even take photos. And then you can pull out that checklist that you had that client make for you and sign off on. And you can say, look, you didn't tell me to take any pictures of this aunt from Australia. It's nowhere on this list. So how was I supposed to know that? So it's there to protect you as well. At the same time, it's there to help you make sure that you get everything that client wants. That's a good thing. Checklists. Moving on to point number four. Number four is my favorite. It's meeting in person. So much of today's correspondence is done via email, text message even, or over the phone. But there's nothing quite like sitting across from a prospective client and being able to sell yourself. You're as much of the product as the actual images and video that you're shooting. So sell yourself. Show them why they want to hire you. Show them that charming personality. Show them that excitement and enthusiasm for what it is that you do. That's going to get you more bookings than hiding behind an email. Meeting in person can go so far for building your brand and your rapport. I don't know why people don't do it enough. Pick a coffee shop, set up camp, meet some clients there, show them your work, build a rapport, pay for their coffee, just have a good time, kind of get that friendship rolling so they feel comfortable trusting you with their big day or with their huge project or giving you money if you're younger than them. That is a huge advantage instead of just sending off a text message or just leaving a voicemail. Meet them in person. Tip number five. Closing out this video and closing out this three-part series. And don't worry for everyone who was complaining about this microphone. I don't like that I can see the mic. It's okay. I change things up all the time. That's the kind of guy I am. This background's here, then it's there, then it's that. Yeah. Tip number five is putting yourself out there. I remember when I started photography and I wanted to make this a business and I wanted to make a living, I sort of expected the work to come to me. I was like, okay, I'll build a website. I'll get some business cards. I'll send a few texts. I'll put my stuff on Facebook. I'll start writing a blog. and. And they'll come. People will just knock on my door. They'll just call my phone and be like, hey, is this Peter McKinnon, the photographer who just built that brand new website and has fresh business cards? I'd love to hire you. Doesn't happen that way. It won't happen that way. Maybe once in a blue moon, but for the most part, that's probably because it's family related. You're never going to get just random cold calls knocking on your door, offering you money. You got to go get that work yourself. You got to put yourself out there. Always have your gear with you. Always. Let's just say it's a simple family barbecue and you got your camera with you. You're snapping photos of the family, of the events, of people smiling and laughing and then you send them out to the family. Maybe a family friend was there or the cousin says, hey, these are actually great photos. And when their friend says they need a photographer, oh, my cousin did some great work. Like here's some photos he took at our family. Oh yeah, we'd love him to shoot our family barbecue. Boom, job done, secured. Or maybe you're at a restaurant and you're taking some pictures of food and the owner comes up to you and says, hey, uh, I might need some photos. Like what's, what's, what does your work look like? Or better yet, finding that manager and saying, hey, I'm a photographer and I'd love to do food photography and I would be interested in possibly working for you. Maybe reshooting your menu or do some social work for you, for your Instagram account. Putting yourself out there to kind of generate those leads, generate that work, it doesn't hurt anybody. The worst case scenario, the worst thing that's gonna happen, someone's gonna say, no, I don't need it, I don't want it. You can either try to convince them or you can move on to the next person. But sitting at home, just because you've got a nice Instagram profile or a nice website, it doesn't mean anyone's gonna come knocking to hire you. You gotta go knocking to get those jobs. When those jobs start coming, that word of mouth starts, you know, snowballing into more and more and more prospects. Then the phone starts ringing, but you got to put in the legwork to get there. All right. Those are my five tips, business mistakes, things to avoid and things to help you build a career as a photographer or cinematographer. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you liked this series. It was a really fun three videos to make. I had a really great time and it all comes from personal experience. So if you guys like this, let me know what you liked below. Let me know which video you liked the most. I'd love to hear from you. Get the conversation going. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. 2018 style. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to go find Maddie.